We've only gone and done it again. That's right, I'm gonna give you more detail than you could ever possibly need on how the setups in F123 affect the tire wear. So let's jump straight into it then. Tire wear in F123 is entirely based on how stressed the tire is at any given corner. Now the higher speed corners stress the tires more than the lower speed corners, but actually you have a bigger difference over tire wear than anything else because it depends how hard you're pushing the tires in any given corner. This is shown perfectly in three laps I did with absolutely identical setups. They're only about a tenth of lap difference or so, but just pushing a little bit less hard actually saved me from the worst to the best 0.2% tire wear per lap. Now that might not sound like that much, but considering the lap times are so damn close, it does just show there is a one-to-one -one ratio of how hard you push versus how much the tires wear. Now, does that mean this video is pointless? Well, no, it doesn't, because there's certain things you can't affect. Things like how much the tires wear in a straight line, and also things like micro sliding. As you're, as you're turning the corner, if you've got lots of rotation in the car, tires will actually be sliding slightly, and you can't really control that. I should say as well, this is not about finding the fastest setup, although lap time does matter. The fastest setup probably isn't gonna be the best setup for your tires. Uh, we're gonna just try and find a compromise today and just figure out exactly which elements of the setup affect tire wear the most, without affecting lap time too much. So let's get into it. Up until now, before the video is even edited, this video has taken me about a day and a half. So very much appreciate it. Subscribe if you do enjoy this video, guys. Let's get back to it. So let's get into the testing methodology then. So the baseline setup that I used was to have everything set dead in the middle. So exactly halfway between minimum and maximum values. The reason I did this is because the rest of my tests are going to be run either running minimum or maximum values. If I use a default setup, sometimes the default setup is pretty much the minimum or maximum values and that would give us a, a really difficult baseline to work from. Now you already saw these laps a little bit earlier on when I showed you the graph, but the lap times are low 29s uh, and the tire wear is something like 2.7% per lap. Obviously we did see some variance there, but that's roughly what we're going to base this on. Now the first test I did was to run 1-1 wings, absolutely minimum wings. Uh, this actually saw a similar tyre level to our baseline setup, but it was 1.5 seconds per lap slower. So actually pretty shocking tyre wear considering how slow it was. I then tried maximum 50-50 wings, and this actually saw a pretty decent improvement in tyre wear. There was around about 0.2% better tyre wear per lap compared to our baseline setup. Now taking a look at the nice tyre wear graph that you get from the practice programs in F123, um, the difference is, is absolutely clear to see. You can clearly see the difference difference in the two lap times. I believe the reason it's better with higher wings is because first of all, you're slower in the straights, so you're just reducing the, the tire stress slash wear in the straights because you're straight up hitting much less speed, the tires are spinning slower, but actually you're faster in the corners, so in theory that should increase uh, the tire stress through the corners, but actually we don't see that. I mean, I think that's just because you're not sliding as much, you know, the car's much more planted in the corner, the tires aren't moving around, they aren't having to do a bit less work because the downforce is doing the work for them. Should you just run max of wings every track? I, I don't think so. Um, you know, just look at Iron and look at a top time trial setup, roughly run what they want to run. But if you're struggling a little bit, if you're sliding a bit too much, it may be worth increasing the wings a little bit. Next up then is the differential. Now the number here is literally how locked the rear tires are to each other. So maximum 100 diff means the rear tires are completely locked to each other. They can't spin at different speeds. Whereas 50 diff, the lowest you're allowed in the game, uh, the rear tires aren't completely locked to each other. They can spin at slightly different speeds, which just allows you to get the car rotated in the corners. Now on the lowest diff, 50, 50 diff, uh, I found pretty similar tire wear really to my baseline setup, but actually Actually, we're about one second per lap faster. So a massive, massive difference in speed, which basically means an improvement in tire wear because we're able to go a second lap quicker without make, wearing the tires anymore. By contrast, when I maximized the diff, 100, 100 diff, again, I saw similar tire wear, but we were then two seconds per lap slower than the baseline. So that's a three second a lap difference between minimum diff and maximum diff. Again, with pretty similar tire wear. So clearly there, to be able to go three seconds a lap faster, but not wear the tires anymore, lower diff is massively better for tire wear. Now, if we compare the two tire wear graphs for minimum diff versus maximum diff, this is where things get quite interesting. You can see the lower diff actually wears the tires much more in some of the bendy traction zones uh, at Silverstone, particularly towards the end of the lap. You can really see a massive difference where I'm getting on the power. Clearly, perhaps the inside wheel is spinning a bit more than it should, and clearly we're wearing the tires a little bit in that corner. However, the lock diff seems to really wear the tires throughout the corners. Some of the corners where you're maybe not on the throttle and you're just trying to turn the car, because the wheels are completely locked to each other, having to sort of 
slide across the racetrack effectively while they turn the car. It's just not good for tire wear. Next up then is the camber. And this is where things start to get really intuitive if you know how camber works. Camber is basically the tops of the wheels get tilted in towards the car. Obviously that'd be a very extreme angle, but you get the idea. So basically the contact patch at the bottom is much, much less. Uh, with more cambers, with the tires tilted more, we saw about 0.15% higher tire wear per lap, which again is fairly significant, but actually overall similar lap times, interestingly. And then when we did less cambers, so then when we effectively sort of leveled the wheels out as much as the game will allow, uh, we saw pretty similar both tire wear and lap times to the baseline setup. Now looking at the graph, you can see the difference primarily seems to come from the final straight. Now this is the highest speed section of Silverstone. So clearly with, with, the, with the tires tilted in, it seems to be running on that really small contact patch, really affects it on that high speed straight. When they're nice and flat, the, the, the contact patch is much bigger and it doesn't seem to affect things so much. But I actually thought camber might make a bigger difference through the corners, but the graph doesn't seem to show that. So it seems to be then with all that in mind, it's a bit of a no brainer to run the camber as low as you possibly can in order to save the tires. Now, obviously I will say in certain time trial setups, you will see much more front camber than rear camber. This is of course for balance, it's how the car feels. So it's up to you whether you wanna you know, sacrifice a bit of balance with the car in order to save a bit of front tire wear. Onto the toe then, and here's where things get a little bit less intuitive. The toe is the wheels either pointing inwards or outwards. Uh, the front tires tend to point slightly towards each other, while the rear tires tend to point slightly away from each other. Now, you would expect with that in mind that more toe, more the tires literally pointing to, 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 towards each other and dragging down the straight would increase tire wear. Actually, for some reason, we seem to see the opposite of that in my tests. With less toes, so with the, with the tires pretty much just pointing straight forwards, uh, we saw no real difference in either lap time or tire wear compared to our baseline setup. However, with more toe, with the tires pointing either towards or away from each other more, we actually see less tire wear, surprisingly. About 0.1% better tire wear. But I will say we also saw about half a second a lap slower lap time. So I'm wondering if possibly, just because we're going a little bit slower through the corners, it's just saving the tires a little bit. Looking at the graph, honestly doesn't really give me any additional answers. Then a few guys down in the comments will perhaps be able to answer this question a bit better as to why more toe seems to save the tires. As I said, for me, the only thing I can put it down to is slower lap times. But I mean, I am just a bit surprised with this. I really did think increasing the toe would really affect the tires, but it doesn't seem to do that. Onto the suspension setting then, which is actually stiffness in the game. So unsurprisingly, the higher number you run, the more stiff and hard the suspension is. The first test I did was with minimum suspension. Pretty much similar lap times, really. Same lap times, same tire wear as our baseline setup. No big difference there, which is what most most uh, time trial setups seem to run. When I ran maximum stiffness though, right at the top of the graph, uh, I found that the tire wear was pretty similar, but we were about one second per lap slower. So quite a bit slower around Silverstone, which is slightly surprising. Being a high speed circuit, normally you want a bit stiffer through the higher speed, but it just didn't seem to really help. The car just didn't seem to want to turn and the tire wear didn't get any better, but uh, I was just significantly slower. Looking at the two graphs in comparison then, and it does start to make some sense. It does seem that the stiffer suspension you run, you actually seem to wear the tire less in slow speed, but more in high speed, which would be because there's a slight difference in cornering performance. You know, stiffer suspension is bad, it's slow in slow speed, so the tire wears better, and it's quicker, you can go through the corners faster in high speed, so it wears the tires a little bit more. It makes some sense. One important thing to add for the suspension stiffness is that it does heavily affect the balance of the car. So it may not be worth you going minimum on all of the suspension stiffness just to try and get a bit of tire wear, because then the car probably won't feel that great. The time trial setups tend to run a slightly stiffer front end to get a good turn in, so I wouldn't say really to adjust that that much. Onto the anti-roll bars then, or the ARBs. These do pretty much exactly what you'd expect them to do. They try to stop the car rolling through the corners and try and keep it as flat and level as it possibly can. So the first test I did was a softer ARB setting all the way to the left. Uh, and it actually seemed to make the lap times a little bit worse. They're about 0.1% per lap worse than our baseline, but actually the lap times were quite similar, interestingly. When I ran a stiffer anti-roll bar though, the, the graph all the way to the right, uh, it's actually slightly better wear, pretty similar, but very slightly better on the wear. And again, pretty much the same lap times. So it does seem to be that the stiffer anti-roll bar does make the tire wear a little bit better. Look at the two graphs in comparison then, and you can clearly see that the stiffer anti-roll bars are making a much bigger difference in the higher speed corners. Clearly in, the, in those corners, we're stressing the tires at most, and if you just roll into the outside, it's really wearing the outside tire a lot. But if you've got really stiff anti-roll bars, it's keeping the car much more level and wearing the tires much more evenly, just overall reducing the wear. So does that mean you should always run maximum anti-roll bars? Well, it's one of those things, again, that massively affects the balance of the car. So you could increase the anti-roll bars a little bit, and it's not gonna affect it too 
too much. But if you do it too much, particularly front to rear, you're really going to start to feel a difference in how the car handles. Just be a little bit careful making these changes. Onto the ride height then. And unsurprising, these numbers are literally just the how high the car is off the ground. And to be honest, this test didn't really tell us anything for tyre wear. Running minimum ride height just meant the car bottomed out more and I was just a little bit slower. It felt really nice and quick through some of the low speed corners because it wasn't bottoming out. But through the high speed corners with the, with the suspension compression, it was just bottoming out and just felt horrible. And equally, when I had the ride height set to maximum, we just never got the downforce in the first place. The car wasn't low enough to generate any significant downforce. So we saw massive variations in lap time. I don't think it's one of those things you want to change for tyre wear. Just set it as low as you possibly can get away with without bottoming out and then that's it. I did also do a test of the brake bias to make sure that having the brake bias set more frontwards or rearwards didn't make a difference, perhaps more the front tires, more than the rear tires, etc. The percentage, by the way, is an expression of how much of the braking force is going to the front wheels. So if you're locking the front tires, try reducing the percentage down a little bit to bring the brakes a bit more towards the rear and, and equally vice versa. If you're locking the rears a bit much, just bring the brake, brake bias a little bit more towards the front because if you are locking the tires, it is really going to negatively affect the tire wear. But if you're not locking the tires, it doesn't seem to make a massive difference where you have the brake bias. Onto the final setup screen then, and it is, of course, tyre pressures. Now, these, unsurprisingly, the higher number, the harder your tyres are, the more air they've got in them. And uh, the softer pressures definitely seem to help the tyre wear. Uh, when I set them to minimum, we gained about 0.1% per lap tyre wear. Um, we did go a little bit slower as well, about two tenths slower per lap. It wasn't a massive amount, but it was, you know, not not insignificant. Uh, and then equally, when we're around the higher pressures, when we set them to maximum, uh, we actually seem to gain gain 0.1% tyre wear, 0.1% worse tyre wear uh, but overall the lap times were quite similar so looking at the graph then you can see that just the softer tire pressures just generally wear the tires less especially in the high speed turns this is pretty similar to what we saw with suspension you know those two go hand in hand overall i definitely suggest running softer tires but also at silverstone it does slightly negatively affect the lap times because silverstone is such a high speed circuit uh, you do actually want the pressures a little bit higher but definitely not maximum pressures that is just going to negatively affect both your lap times and your tire wear so just run them a little bit higher than minimum at Silverstone, but a lot of tracks you are going to be pretty much at minimum tyre wear. All right, so that's all the nitty gritty detail part of the video out of the way then. And now we go on to the exciting part, which is putting all this into actual practice. First thing I did was run a default setup. So no change at all, load into the game, whatever setup it gives you, run with that. Um, this setup was around about one second per lap faster than just running everything in the middle like I'd been doing previously. But actually, interestingly, the wear was pretty similar. So the wear's not too bad on the default setup. The next thing I did was to try a time trial setup. So I literally went to the time trial leaderboard and stole one of the fastest setups on the leaderboards. Obviously, in time trial, you want to be as fast as possible on track, but there's no tire wear in time trial, so they don't care about that. But interestingly, they actually didn't seem to wear the tires anymore with the setup. But it was around about two seconds faster than the setup we've been running all day. And around about a second second faster than the default setup. So quite a bit faster with no tire wear punishment, which was surprising. I thought it would wear the tires a little bit more. Now here's where we start to put our learnings into practice. The next thing I did was to run the worst setup that I possibly could, based on our learnings today. So I took the default middle setup uh, and I went for minimum wings, maximum camber, maximum toe, minimum anti-roll bars, maximum tire pressures, but I didn't change the diff or the ride height because they seem to affect the lap time much more than the wear. The wear was actually similar with, with, with those two settings, but it just affected the lap times. Uh, and, and running this absolute worst case scenario setup actually was very, very slow. It's about one and a half seconds slower per lap compared to the setup we've been running all day. That's about three and a half seconds slower than the best time trial setup. But interestingly, again, the wear was comparable. Now that doesn't mean that it wasn't bad. Alternatively, if I ran the time trial setup and just drove it three and a half seconds a lap slower, the, the, the wear would be way, way better. So to be that much slower and not have any wear is absolutely terrible. Next up then was to use our learnings today and try and create the best setup that we could in terms of tire wear. So this was about half a second a lap faster than the previous setup we ran, but actually that works out still about a second a lap slower than just having everything in the middle. So it's still not that fast, but it was about 0.5 five percent per lap better than all the, the, than the previous setups that we've been running. So again, that was the default setup, the time trial setup, the worst case scenario setup. All those had pretty similar tire wear, about 2.7% per lap. Uh, and this actually was down to about 2.26%. That means after, let's say, a 30 lap stint, you'll be 15% better off in terms of tire wear. And also it's quicker than that worst setup we ran. So definitely we've been able to put our learnings into practice. We have found a setup that's got quite a significant uh, better tire wear, but obviously it is still hella slow. So 
Let's try this one more time. Let's try tweaking the time trial setup, the setup we know to be the fastest, to see if we can use some of our learnings today to make the tire wear a little bit better without affecting the lap times too much. So this one then, I didn't go quite as extreme. I didn't necessarily just max out everything. I tried to keep the balance similar by not changing things. If they were different front to rear, I kept that difference between the front and the rear. And also I didn't change the wings for this one at all. So I changed the camber, the toe, the anti-roll bars, and the tire pressures. So the lap time then, it was only a couple of tenths slower than the time trial time, which you, know, you could easily put down to human error possibly. Um, but actually the tire wear was about 0.1% per lap better. So not a massive difference, but again, over a 30 lap stint, that is gonna save you about 3% of tire wear. So it's not a massive amount, but obviously I'm also trying to drive as, as well as I can here. I'm getting zero wheel spin. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get zero sliding. I'm trying not to lock up the brakes, all that, all that stuff. And also, you know, this is all with brand new tires. As the tires start to wear, it may make a bigger difference. So 0.1% is not nothing and you could end up just just tweaking things slightly just to improve it realistically at the top end with the best setups you're not going to find massive massive differences otherwise those setups would already be on the leaderboards um but yeah a little bit disappointed findings there so what does all this mean then? Should you change your setup? Should you always run minimum tire pressures, maximum anti-roll bars and all those things? Well, once again, I go back to what I said at the start of the video, you make the biggest difference to the tire wear. You know, I think setup, although it does make a difference, definitely if you want to save the tires, just drive a little bit more conservatively, particularly in the high speed corners, perhaps you're really pushing, you're right on the limit and you're turning the wheel as much as you can. Just try and just go a little bit slower through those corners and just take it a little bit easier on the tires is actually gonna make a bigger difference. But you can make some setup tweaks just to help you out a little bit. The camber, toe, anti-roll bars, and tire pressure seem to be the four elements that make the biggest difference in tire wear without making a massive difference in lap time. For example, this research has allowed me to improve my setups at Baku. The default setup that you download from the leaderboard uh, has maximum rear, or maximum front camber, sorry, but minimum rear camber. And I'm always wearing the rear tires massively at Baku. So I'd massively increase the rear camber, which I think would massively help with the tire wear. So it's helped me, hopefully it's helped you as well guys and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already i'll catch you next time thanks for watching bye bye